uh, you wrote this article in the national that india wants to set a new standard for the space program uh, so you also spoke about that prime minister narendra modi has an ambitions uh, uh, and uh, he has tough competition and obviously looking that uh, india's 75th independence day uh, they are celebrating it and uh, the special tasks have been given to the indian space research organization as well so uh, johan how do you see prime minister modi uh in this space program race uh, and where do you see india uh, in this uh, uh, and what kind of uh, from which lens have you seen uh, india and prime minister modi that how and how indian space program is uh, uh, going and what are the challenges and opportunities for india in it yeah i think um you know obviously space exploration is something that has enormous practical value um so much of our life already comes via space. We just don't realize it, you know. Telephone calls are bounced through satellites. You know, the weather reports that we look at are <clears throat> put together with the help of weather satellites. Um, uh, you know, uh, things like GPS, you know, help us tell our location. So, you know, there's a lot of practical applications of space, but human space flight is, is something different. Human space flight is not yet, it may, in the future, it may be a practical matter, you know, with uh, commercial value, with military value. But at the moment, this is, a, this is something that fundamentally has emotional value. It, it, it tends to be about things like pride. It tends to be about things like hope and excitement. <clears throat> so when, 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 any country, not just India, whether it's America, the Soviets in the old days, China, when they did make a big commitment to human space flight, it is ultimately a political commitment and it is a signal to their own population of showing what the country is capable of. And it's a signal to the world, again, showing what they believe the country is capable of. So there's this feeling that, um, you know, and what you, how you think about the future has a lot to do with how you think about the past. In India's case, there is this feeling that, um, you know, there, there's, you know, just like with China, there's a, there's a deep sense of wonder about how did, how did a civilization as great as we are and were end up being colonized? And one of the answers is because we fell behind in science and technology. So there's this deep desire to catch up and demonstrate world-class levels of capability right and nothing signals that more than space so i think that is a big part of um you know prime minister modi and i think um the bjp in general have a lot of their messaging is about the new india um and i don't think that there's anything there's, there's no stronger signal about this, the arrival of this new India than putting a man in space. And, you know, in doing so, being only the fourth country in the world after uh, the United States, the Soviet Union, um, and China. So, um, you know, four may not be as impressive as one, two, or three, but it still would mean a lot to the Indian public and would mean a lot, uh, and it would be still be an impressive achievement as far as the rest of the world is concerned. Hmm. So uh, do you think that India is going to go for uh, an independent uh, space program? Or uh, do you think that uh, India is going to, uh, if they, they are trying to be the space power, so or they will just join with the West? Uh, or uh, do you think that this is just the government-led affair or for the commercial purposes or the private sector? How India envisions that? Uh, or, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, when we when we studied that some countries are getting nuclear weapons, uh, there used to be that either they're getting for real security threats or uh, they're getting for the prestige. So why India is into it? This is the government, commercial, private. Uh, and then is capacity to do it independently or it will partner with the West for this? Kama, you've gone straight to the, the most important questions. Um, so I think the, um, the, the official answer to the question, it would be that India hasn't yet decided. It has a uh, humans in space flight policy. 
uh, which has been drafted and which is under review. Um, you know, India's history with these kind of big policy reviews is that um, that final step of approval can be very slow because um, even though the bureaucracy can develop options and develop a roadmap, um, you know, political decision making is often a different matter because they have other concerns and, you know, they see they have different time frames. But the draft uh, doc, uh, the, the, the draft, you know, space policy um, does offer some insights, as do the writings of former Israel, senior Israel figures. Um, I would say that I'll, I'll, I'll start with the question of independent versus uh, collaborative. The truth is that all space programs are collaborative. Um, NASA wants collaboration. Um, even the Chinese, even they appear to be going on their own, but the fact is that they would very much like to be collaborating. It's just that the US passed a law in 2011 that actually legally prevents uh, NASA from collaborating with China. And in fact, you know, as China is building its space station, it, it, it's um, just like the Soviets before that is instituting a program where um, astronauts from other countries uh, will be able to uh, fly, uh, you know, to, to be included on, you know, as part of the crew on um, Chinese launches and spend time on the Chinese space station. It appears that, for example, Pakistan uh, is lined up to, to participate. Um, uh, there's some talk about uh, PF <clears throat> candidates being selected and being sent to China for training. So my point is that all space is collaborative. What really matters the, the difference between the players is the level of capability you bring to the table and therefore the kind of terms that you can negotiate. Um, and India recognizes that it cannot, uh, or rather it's not in a position to afford the capabilities at the American or Chinese level, but it doesn't want to be stuck at the same level, say the Europeans or the Japanese um, who have an astronaut corps, um, who can even manufacture um, you know, space station modules, but just didn't want to make that investment in spacecraft, in human rated spacecraft, because that they couldn't justify, it, right? But for the Indian public, that independent capability means a lot politically and emotionally. The other thing, but however, uh, once they demonstrate that capability, um, it will en enable India to participate in international missions at a higher level because it's bringing more to the table. Um, to go, go back uh, to answer the, the next question about public versus private, um, it's clear that the, um, the Indian government and the Indian space policy community has been paying attention to what's happening. We're at a time of massive disruption. Um, it used to be in the West that the lead players were the big defense contractors, you know, companies like Lockheed Martin, or Boeing, right? Um, they were the only ones that, uh, that, you know, and they benefited from special relationships with the government, you know? So it was, it was very similar to defense contracting. Uh, what we see now is um, complete disruption. It's more like um, information technology and, uh, you know, the internet startup age where you have small companies that come and do things completely differently. Even their engineering approaches closer to that of software development than um, traditional aerospace companies. And uh, the biggest example of that is Elon Musk's SpaceX, um, which is poised, which is already completely disrupted space. They've developed new capabilities that no government has been able to catch up with yet. And they're poised to go even further. Um, you know, if they succeed, human spaceflight is going to be transformed within a couple of years. Uh, um, it will become much less expensive, much less dangerous. Um, but this is hard for governments to fully imagine. You know, where, where it's it's the analogy I would make is you know where when an era that's like the 1920s, there are airplanes up in the sky. We know that there's going to be airliners one day, but that's you know it's hard for people to believe that it's that close. So. Uh, the Indian government does seem to recognize that the private sector will need to be much more involved. They've 
Uh, they've, with their encouragement, there's now a trade industry body that represents Indian private industry. They are now ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, um, is now subcontracting to private industry. And ultimately, what the Indian government seems to want is for Indian private companies to participate in the global space economy. And that's going to be uh, a prize that is just as big as the political and emotional bump. Um, so because a manned space success is the best possible advertisement for the, the capabilities of the Indian space industry. Hmm. So you had um, you wonderfully explained that, but the next very important question remains that, uh, for example, this ISRO, uh, this ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, how do they look at this, uh, the manpower for this aerospace industry? Uh, obviously, uh, the cost of the manpower will definitely be low in India. Uh, but this field is very big. You are into the space medicine, you are into the material science, robotics and all these things. So, you know, for example, I understand that many countries, they couldn't go nuclear because they didn't have uh, sufficient infrastructure or they didn't have the scientists or the manpower. So how does India uh, is into this? Uh, uh, because uh, what I have learned recently that many Indians, uh, the, 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 the Indian diaspora, which is working in America and around the world, they do not want to come back. So they need obviously this indigenous local scientist of manpower for this. How do you see this? Will uh, if this private uh, partnership is into this uh, space industry is there? Will India have that manpower, or will India have uh, um, uh, that for workforce uh, for this burgeoning uh, aerospace industry? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one thing is clear is that there is no shortage of engineering talent. Uh, and world-class engineering talent in India. Um, they've built the infrastructure in terms of universities, <clears throat> um, such as the IIT system, as well as a host of uh, both public and private uh, institutions. So, you know, whether it comes to uh, aerospace engineering or, or the software engineering side, which is uh, increasingly important in um, space exploration, there's, um, you know, it's, it's exactly, the same factors that make um, India highly competitive uh, as part of the global information technology economy, right, is that you have a highly skilled, uh, low-cost workforce and a bi relatively business-friendly environment. So you can see that India, you know, I would say that, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to this, actually, um, it's, it's really Indian business that's going to be the driver more than Israel. And in fact, it's, it's going to be interesting to see um, how Israel and the business community uh, manage their relationship. Because in the past, Israel is used to being the be all and end all of space, you know, with some input from the scientific community. Um, but um, I think uh, Prime Minister Modi. Uh, Modi's vision, you know, which you see with things like Make in India, which you see with uh, sectors like aviation and defense industry, is one which is much more business focused. So this is going to be, I think, a cultural change for space uh, in India. Hmm. Okay, Johan, my last question with you is that uh, obviously India uh, does have an ambition. Obviously, countries must have an ambition. But how, India is not just an economy like Great Britain or America or Chinese and they have uh, many other challenges which which uh, with the Americans or the European countries they don't have India has a big population uh, they have a big economy they have a three trillion dollar GDP but that does not mean that uh, the people are uh, uh, having uh, everyone is having food on the table and obviously we recently, recently saw what happened with this COVID crisis uh, uh, the government didn't have this health coverage, although the people died in America, and we, we all understand that. But do you really think that a country like India should invest into this uh, kind of a field, or do you believe that uh, the time has changed? Uh, now uh, uh, the, the nations need to go for adventures. Uh, they need to invest in everything. They should be part of everything. Uh, and other than just being, you know, and, and this is necessary for raising the morale of the country, so my question here is that with these financial problems, with rising population, 
its economy is not as developed as like the western countries who can afford to invest on such kind of fields uh, how will india cope up with this uh, because uh, uh, not every indian will go for or will need such kind of uh, technology uh, or how how do you correlate this or how indian government correlates or how the critics of the prime minister modi will just uh, make the case that uh, uh, this is not a field where india should invest uh, does this question make a case yeah so i think that this is a point of view <clears throat> that makes more sense outside india than inside it um the space program is incredibly popular um and i think you could make a you could make a comparison even to for example russia and the soviet union you know these are kind of, you know the soviet union in the past and russia in the present up are places where uh, you know the standard of living was not the same as the West, but there was incredible public support for space exploration because space exploration is fundamentally exciting, you know, for, just as a human being. Forget as a you know as a citizen or a nationalist, right? It's it's exciting as a human being. And then you know, if it, once the question of national pride comes in, then it's even more powerful. And so, and the Indian government understands that there's this very broad consensus. Now, the levels of spending are still quite modest. Um, uh, Israel's budget is one twelfth of that of the of the United States of NASA. Um, now, the uh, the manned space program is ambitious, so there have been increases. Its uh, its budget has gone up by fifty percent. Uh, which is still, even that 50% is only 25% of what Israel has asked for. So it's clear that the government is being very frugal. Um, and they're not going to spend more than they think they can afford. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing is that they're using, you know, I think ultimately they plan to use this also as an advertisement for Indian industry. Um, when you think about, for example, NASA's achievements, the spin-offs, um, and uh, the uh, um, the publicity it provides for American technology, right? It, there's going to be a similar kind of halo effect around Indian technology, which will probably be good for it. But I I do think that, like for example, even now, because there's a short call in the amount of money that Israel received versus what it asked for, it looks like it's most likely going to have to. Uh, reallocate money for other programs that maybe have more practical value. Um, Israel's founding mission when it was created was to provide practical solutions to people, the kind of things I talked about, like remote sensing communications. And so I think there's going to be some real budgetary pressure where some of those practical um, applications may suffer um, uh, in order to continue funding um, these higher profile manned space efforts. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, obviously, uh, one should um, really appreciate uh, if uh, the Indian government and the Indian people really want to work on this and uh, especially the developing countries uh, must do invest in this. Uh, and obviously, this is raising the stature of uh, Indian Prime Minister uh, that is taking uh, the Indians out of the space. Uh, but anyhow,